वेलकम टू माई चैनल स्टैटिस्टिक्स मेड सिंपल एंड आई एम सविता वेल सिंह पार्ट फोर टू सोल्यूशन टू प्रॉब्लम बेस्ड ऑन द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विल बी सॉल्विंग वन एंड टू मार्क प्रॉब्लम प्रॉब्लम सेवन राइट द पी डी एफ ऑफ अ नॉर्मल वेरिएट विथ मीन टेन एंड स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन टू लेट्स स्टार्ट द प्रॉब्लम राइट गिवन म्यू इज इक्वल टू टेन दैट्स द मेन द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज सिग्मा विच इज इक्वल टू टू नाउ लेट्स कंसिडर द जनरल फॉर्मैट ऑफ द पी डी एफ ऑफ द नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एफ ऑफ एक्स इक्वल टू वन बाई सिग्मा रूट टू पाई e to the power minus half x minus mu divided by sigma the whole square and write the ranges for the three terms that is x lies between minus infinity and infinity that means minus infinity less than x less than infinity similarly write the range for mu which is again minus infinity less than mu less than infinity and sigma can take values which are only greater than 0 now all you have to do is substitute the values of mu and sigma in the above pdf so we will get f of x equal to 1 divided by instead of sigma now write 2 root 2 pi e to the power minus half x minus instead of mu write ten divided by again instead of sigma write two the whole square. Now write the range only for x because we already know the range or the value for mu and sigma. So minus infinity is less than x is less than infinity. Problem eight. What are the values of beta one and beta two for a normal distribution? So this we have already learned under the properties of a normal distribution. You know that the normal distribution is a symmetric distribution. In other words, beta one will be equal to zero, and you also know that it is a mesocurtic distribution. So a measure for kurtosis is beta two. and in this case beta 2 is equal to 3 problem 9 find the quartile deviation and mean deviation of a normal distribution with mean 30 and standard deviation 6 so there are two parts for this question that is a quartile deviation and the mean deviation so each of them can come as a two mark problem so one mark will be given for the formula and the other mark is for the solution so first write given the mean is mu which is equal to 30 standard deviation is sigma which is equal to 6 so let's write the formula for the quartile deviation which we have learned under the properties of the normal distribution so we know that quartile deviation is equal to 2 by 3 sigma so now all you have to do is in place of sigma substitute the value 6 so after simplification you will get qd that is a quartile deviation is equal to 4 similarly write the formula for mean deviation so we know that md is equal to 4 by 5 sigma which is equal to 4 by 5 into 6 that is 24 divided by 5 Which simplifies to M D equal to four point eight. Problem ten. The first and third quartiles of a normal distribution are forty one and sixty point four. Find the median. So write given Q one is the first quartile that is equal to forty one. The third quartile means Q three, which is sixty point four. So now remember an important point that whenever we need to find out the median when the quartiles are given, 
we use a formula m equal to q1 plus q3 divided by 2. So if we add the first quartile and the third quartile and divide by 2, then we get the median which is nothing but the second quartile which implies m equal to substitute the values for q1 and q3 and divide by 2. 41 plus 60.4 divided by 2 is 101.4 divided by 2. Therefore, the median m is equal to 50.7. Problem 11. The quartiles q1 and q3 of a normal distribution are 25 and 50 respectively find the mean. So now this problem is similar to problem 10 and here we make use of an important property of the normal distribution. You know that the normal distribution is a symmetric distribution which means that the mean, median and mode are all equal or they coincide. So whenever they give you the quartiles and ask you to find out either the mean, median or the mode, you have to first calculate the median. So write given Q1 is equal to 25 and Q3 is equal to 50. Now write the formula M equal to Q1 plus Q3 divided by 2 m is equal to 25 plus 50 divided by 2 which is 75 by 2 or the median m is equal to 37.5. Now the question was to find out the mean and now write the sentence that since a normal distribution is symmetric the mean, median and mode coincide. That is a sentence which is written in pink color and you know that the mean for the normal distribution is written in terms of expectation that is e of x is equal to mu and because the mean median and mode coincide mu will be the same as the median that is 37.5 or you can write mu is equal to 37.5 problem 12 a normal variate has mean 60 and variance 36. Find the first and third quartiles. Again here there are two parts of the question that is we should find out the first and the third quartiles. So the first quartile can be asked separately as a two marker and finding out the third quartile can be asked as a two marker where one mark will be for the formula and one mark will be for the solution. So be careful when you write the notations, write given the mean is 60 that means mu is equal to 60. Now the variance notation is sigma square which is equal to 36 in other words which implies sigma is equal to 6. Now let's write the formula for the first quartile again which we have learned under the properties of the normal distribution. So Q1 is given in terms of mu and sigma as Q1 is equal to mu minus 2 by 3 sigma which is equal to substitute for mu and sigma and simplify 60 minus 2 by 3 into 6 which is equal to 60 minus 4. So you will get the first quartile Q1 equal to 56. Now in a similar way, let's write the formula for the third quartile Q3 in terms of mu and sigma. So Q3 is equal to mu plus 2 by 3 sigma which implies Q3 is equal to 60 plus 2 by 3 into 6 which is equal to 60 plus 4. Therefore Q3 is equal to 64. Problem 13. If x is a normal variate, then what is the value of probability of x greater than or equal to mu? Let's write given 
x follows normal within brackets write the parameters mu comma sigma square now let's write the standard normal variate formula z equal to x minus mu by sigma which follows normal 0 1 now start with the question which is asked so start with consider probability of x greater than or equal to mu now the expression is in terms of x and you know that the statistical tables for the normal distribution is in terms of z so let us standardize standardize means you have to subtract mu and divide by sigma throughout so you will get this step as equal to probability of x minus mu by sigma is greater than or equal to mu minus mu divided by sigma now x minus mu by sigma is z and plus mu and minus mu in the numerator will get cancelled so the second step simplifies to equal to probability of z greater than or equal to 0 now there is no need to actually draw the diagram because it's just a two mark question you can visualize this expression in your mind now remember that the total area under the normal curve is 1 and the area from the center line to infinity is 0 0.5 and the area from 0 to minus infinity is also 0 0.5 so again I am repeating, you can write the value directly as 0 0.5 or if necessary you can draw the diagram and then write the shaded area in words and you can write the probability as 0 0.5. So according to this slide, what we have done is we have drawn the standard normal curve the center line is z equal to 0, the extremities are minus infinity and infinity. Now greater than or equal to 0 means you have to shade only to the right of 0. So we have shaded from 0 to infinity in yellow color and that area now you write it in words as area from 0 to infinity. Therefore probability of z greater than or equal to 0 is 0 0.5. Problem 14. This is a last problem based on a normal distribution. If x follows normal 140, comma 5 square, what is probability of x less than or equal to 140? Let's write the first step given mu equal to 140. Sigma square is equal to 25. That is the variance which implies the standard deviation is sigma which is equal to 5. Then write the formula for the standard normal variate z equal to x minus mu by sigma follows normal 0 1. Now start with the expression which is given. Consider probability of x less than or equal to 140. Then standardize which is equal to probability of x minus mu by sigma is less than or equal to 140 minus mu divided by sigma x minus mu by sigma is z then substitute for mu and sigma which will result in probability of z less than or equal to 140 minus 140 divided by 5 so 140 and minus 140 get cancelled so 0 divided by 5 will be 0 and the step will reduce to equal to probability of z less than or equal to 0 now there are two options you can directly write the answer for probability of z less than or equal to 0 as 0 0.5 or if you are not sure then you have to draw the normal curve and write it in words to get the final answer. But again I repeat because it's a two mark problem you can directly write the answer as 0 0.5 but according to this slide I have drawn the standard normal curve the center line is z equal to 0 the extremities are minus infinity and infinity so going back to the expression probability of z less than or equal to 0 means what you have to shade from 
the point zero to the left side. So I have shaded in purple color from zero to minus infinity and that area you write it in words as equal to area from zero to minus infinity. Again making use of the property that the area from the center line to minus infinity is 0.5 you will get the final answer as probability of x less than or equal to 140 is equal to 0 0.5. Here's hoping all of you have understood the concepts through my seven videos based on the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, their properties, computation of areas under the normal curve through various examples and solutions to problems based on the normal distribution which was divided into four parts. Preparation to success is the hard work of daily practice with improvement. So keep practicing. Thank you for watching and look forward to my next video based on the chi-square distribution.